Hi, Steve. <laughs> After seven years married and five kids, my husband is constantly calling me crazy. It's something all you men say to your women, and it's really annoying. It riles us up. So here's an example. We were at a wedding, and I, I came out of the bathroom to find him laughing and smiling with another woman. So my immediate reaction was to ask him, what's so funny? And who is that? instant reaction was to call me crazy. So I want to know, Steve, why do men call women crazy and what do, do they really mean? Why do men call you crazy? It's because you are crazy. Well, the person that thinks they lost a mind, they're not crazy. The people that think they're not crazy, they're crazy. So this question comes from the absolute gold mine that is the Steve Harvey Show, and it's during this segment called, What Do Men Really Want? Steve Harvey gathered up a big audience of women to ask questions and then gathered up a big audience of men to answer those questions through a poll. In this particular video, the poll is kind of irrelevant, so I'm not going to go over it. But I thought I would use this special to remind you or introduce you if you're new to all the behaviors that you don't have to deal with when you go MGTOW. Take Angie, for example. She's our Exhibit A. Angie is a woman who is confused as to why her husband of seven years called her crazy. And she gets really pissed when her husband says it, too. Listen to her voice again. My husband is constantly calling me crazy. It's something all you men say to your women, and it's really annoying. It riles us up. Maybe it's just me, but have you ever noticed that the only people who get super offended at being called crazy are people who are crazy? I mean, if she wasn't crazy, she would just laugh at her bad behavior and then course correct for the next time. Instead, she got pissed off because she has no intention of actually changing that behavior when really her husband was being nice and using a euphemism when he called her crazy because he should have called her controlling and abusive. We were at a wedding and I, I came out of the bathroom to find him laughing and smiling with another woman. So my immediate reaction was to ask him, what's so funny? And who is that? He is on such a short leash that he can't even so much as enjoy speaking to another woman in polite conversation. And she is the one who is offended when he calls her crazy for running up to him and saying, Who's this hoe? I'm picking up on a severe lack of class here. She's treating him like he is guilty until proven innocent. That's not how sane people treat others. This is how a sane person would handle this situation where she thought her husband may be trying to cheat. You walk up to him after going to the bathroom and say, Hey, I was just going to get a drink from the bar. Do you want one? When the woman he is talking to sees you, you say, Oh, hi, my name's Angie. Nice to meet you. And then she might respond, Hi, Angie. My name is Cheryl. Nice to meet you, too. How do you know John? Oh, John and I have been married for seven years. There. Was that so hard? You found out who he's talking to, you've notified her that he is married, and you are polite about it so that you didn't piss anyone off. That's how you do it. Despite how easy this all is, she tries to beat him down for daring to talk to someone other than her. And then she tries to come out like a good guy by saying, how dare all you men call women crazy? You mean, how dare your husband call out your abusive behavior? How dare your husband point out that you don't trust him. Now, before I move on to the next example, let me tell you about this video's sponsor, Redux Movement. Redux Movement is an online resource that focuses on getting the hips healthy and fixing alignment. Why? Because a large portion of chronic pain, like back pain, originates from the hips, and a major cause of injury is bad alignment. Learn how to relieve chronic pain and prevent injury at reduxmovement.com it's the first link in the description. All right, next clip. So the last time I thought my wife was crazy, I, I'm a newlywed, I've been married for about two months. Yeah. Well, ain't the last, that ain't the last time you gonna say it, homie. <laughs> we got a, uh, a nice wedding gift in the mail. It was a silver cake cutter server. Uh, very expensive, very nice, and it came in terrible condition. It was dirty and tarnished, and my wife was upset about this. She wanted to send it back. She thought it should be in perfect condition. I didn't see what the big deal was. I thought we could just put it in the dishwasher and keep it, and no harm, no foul. 
Uh, that was the wrong answer. So this, <laughs> this uh, you know, sparked a huge fight. We argued. Uh, she stormed off. She slept on the couch that night. <laughs> and I'm thinking... <laughs> I'm thinking all of this over a little, you know, tiny cake knife. And uh, so eventually I relented. We returned the knife and, uh, you know, everything was smoothed over and we're fine. But it just kind of reminds me that, you know, crazy can kind of pop up any time. I don't think that this guy was really paying attention to what happened. Maybe he was just thinking, well, I'm used to it, so this sounds like fairly normal behavior. This situation's not too bad. Are you kidding me? They just got married, and his wife thinks that it's a good idea to have a blowout argument to the point where she has to go sleep somewhere else over a dirty cake knife. In the words of Tom Likas, the marriage is new, so this is the best it's ever going to get. It's only downhill from here, and she is already having a massive fight over nonsense. Do you know what this really says about her personality and what this says about their relationship? It says that she thinks a stupid wedding gift that you can just clean with soap and water is more important than a happy marriage. This cake knife is so important that she would rather risk her relationship than put up with a dirty knife. She cares more about that damn knife than she does her husband two months into the marriage. He should try for an annulment or a high-speed divorce. The fact that he doesn't see this and plays it off as just crazy is amazing to me. It's amazing how well women are able to hide their abusive behaviors to most men. I mean, she has her husband so well trained that he says he gave her the wrong answer when he stated his opinion. No harm, no foul. Uh, that was the wrong answer. The wrong answer as if she's the final judge on what's right and what's wrong. Is this the kind of equality that feminists fought for? Speaking of equality, the only response he gets to his story is that the women were unhappy that she had to sleep on the couch instead of him. Now, let me, let me tell you something. The whole time you were saying this, do you know what this audience picked up and they said, she slept on the couch. <laughs> That's all I was hearing. She slept on the couch. Now, I must be the insane person because what I see is a woman who threw an absolute fit over nothing, which damaged her marriage, and the women in the audience think that the husband is guilty and he is the one who should sleep on the couch because he's the man. If this is what married men have to put up with as normal behavior, then why the hell would any man want to get married? So thank you, Sandman. Thank you, Tom Likas. Thank you, TFM, for sparing me and everyone else from this bullshit. This next clip comes from a different special, which is just the opposite special. What do women really want? Back in the day when I was in relationships with uh, a couple of girls, not all at the same time, but <laughs> it, it was more or less, she was so concerned about where I was. So I would get a phone call and she'd say, hey, where are you? And I'd be like, I'm just hanging out with my friends doing whatever we're doing, pretty much nothing. So her question to me is always, oh, well, uh, would you mind maybe sending me like a Snapchat or you know, anything to let me know exactly what you're doing at this moment? So my question is, why is it so dang important for women to know exactly what we're doing every second of the day. There are all these feminist talk shows that women watch where they talk about the toxic male, the male abuser. He isolates you from your friends and family. He doesn't let you do anything without his approval first. He always wants to know what you're doing. Do you women ever point the finger at yourself? Because I've known many women to be able to identify an abusive male only to go right ahead and practice the same exact behavior on their partner but this is clown world, so I guess I'm wrong. Somehow constantly checking where you are is a good thing when women do it. Well, this is what we did, fellas. We surveyed this lovely group of women behind me and we asked, is it because A, women like details is how we're built? B, we don't trust you? Or is it C, to make sure we approve of what you're doing? A whopping 71% of women said, see, they want to make sure they approve of what you're doing. Oh, I get it now. You see, she cares about you so much that she just wants to check up on your every move to see if you are making the right decision. My first thought when I saw this clip was, 
What exactly is the difference between we don't trust you and to approve of what you're doing? Because there isn't. 71% of women said that they wanted to approve of what their partner was doing, and 23% of women said they don't trust their partner. This means that 94% of women who were polled don't trust their partner. 94%. Now, I'll wait for someone in the comments to write a 10-paragraph essay on why most women are still viable partners, because clearly I'm wrong about this. Or am I? 71% said they wanted to approve of what their partner was doing. Why are they behaving like that? Why are they micromanaging their partners? Why do women do this? It's not because they care about you and just want to make sure you aren't making bad choices. It's because they know that they have very little to bring to the table and any other woman is just as good as she is. If you were a man out in a place with other women, then you might discover that you could just trade her in for a better model. If she was valuable, if she had more to offer than just children and sex, then she wouldn't care where you were out going because she knows that other women wouldn't be able to compete with her. That is why all of these women are so insecure. They know they haven't built anything that would make them more valuable than any other woman on the street. That is why they have to abuse their men into staying with them. Now, okay, ladies, let me ask you a question. Are you curious about the grumblings that you're hearing from the 2,000 men. Yes. Okay, I think that when you answer 71% of you say, it's because you want to make sure that you approve of what we're doing. They think they don't need your approval <laughs> of what they're doing. <laughs> but, fellas, <laughs> but listen to this though. It's really better than them saying they don't trust you because that's how we take it. That's how we take it? That's because that's how it is. It sounds better than them saying they don't trust the men they are dating? Of course it sounds better because they are lying about their behavior to make it look like they are doing something honest and good. So now, not only are you dealing with a woman who doesn't trust you, you are dealing with a liar. That lack of trust is just her behavior projected onto you. She knows that she is a liar, therefore to her, everyone is a liar, therefore her boyfriend is a liar, and he is guilty until he proves himself innocent with Snapchat. However, it's not like they're consciously doing this stuff. It's worse than that. They care so little about other people's needs that they are completely unaware that this is bad behavior. Look at their response to the guy's outrage. They can't see that they are dishonest. They can't see that they are abusive. They can't see that everyone hates being micromanaged. If you don't care enough to notice things like this, then what makes you think that men would want to put up with someone who is not willing to look at herself and her situation critically? So much of this is just completely antisocial behavior, behavior that makes you entirely undesirable to other people in general, so the only way you can get those people to be around you is to manipulate and abuse them. This is the kind of behavior that I work against. You don't want to be antisocial because every opportunity you get is going to start with good communication skills. Take their bad example and run from it because clearly these women are not effective communicators. MGTOW should be men who are highly desirable. And the reason that is, is because you will save far more men if you are a desirable person than if you are an antisocial basement dwelling loser because you will be someone who other men want to be like. And if you want to get back at women for all of the abusive things that they have done, then the greatest way to do that is to be the best version of yourself, despite that abuse. Bad people hate it when other people are successful. And when those bad women start orbiting you, you can leave them in the dust. Be that one cake she can't eat. Be the one gallon tub of ice cream she can't have. And you can be the kind of person who won't put up with any of the shit described on this Steve Harvey special. And with that said, I think that will be enough for this video. If you liked it, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, comment and share. If you would like to support this channel, then you can do so by donating through PayPal, Subscribestar, or Patreon. All of those links are in the description and on my channel page. Last, if you haven't checked out my BitChute channel yet, then you can do so by also checking out the description or my channel page. Other than that, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.